Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Today, I would like to present my final year project proposal which is mechanical properties of particle board from coconut shell using sucrose as natural binder My name is Muhammad Hazi Akhmar bin Muhammad Ali and I am the final year student from the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering UITM Sha'alam My supervisor is Puan Norleha binti Abdul Rahman The content that I would like to present today are the project summary, formal statement, objective, project scope, and limitation, literature review, methodology, expected result, project sustainability towards environment and economy, gun chart, and the reference. As for the project summary, the particle board is an environmental sustainable material since it incorporates wood waste such as wood chip, sawdust, and wood shavings to form both mixed together with a resin. They are often used as an alternative to plywood or medium density fiberboard to reduce the building cost. In fact, with ample samples from all over the world, these waste are inexpensive. The objective of this study is to investigate the mechanical properties of the particle board using coconut shell and sucrose as natural binder. The mechanical properties such as structural, tensile and density will be evaluated and scanning electron microscope SEM will be conducted to investigate their microstructure as well as their bonding properties. The methodology involves crushing, milling, screening and hot pressing. The variation of sucrose percentage will be used in three different pressing temperatures. The results of the study are used to estimate the behavior of coconut fiber, especially as a flooring material where it is particularly suitable for building materials. As for the background of study, the scientific name for coconut palm is called Cocos nuciferae. One of the most valuable plants in the world is certainly the coconut palm. Coconut is developed in 92 countries worldwide, including India, Indonesia, the Philippines and Sri Lanka, where four major countries contribute 78% to global production. Global coconut production is 5 billion coconuts with estimated that 11 million farmers rely exclusively on coconuts for their income. The Philippines is considered one of the major coconut growers in the world. In terms of acreage, coconut is the fourth largest crop after rubber, oil palm, and paddy in Malaysia. Recent coconut consumption such as coconut water, coconut milk, and coconut oil is highly voluminous. With the continuous growth of the world and urbanization, the production of waste has risen accordingly. As for the problem statement, the rapid infrastructure growth of a nation that has generated a higher demand for building materials for rapid and economic construction. Coconut shells have been the key contributors to the harmful environmental effect of inadequate waste management. Coconut shell waste material has been found to be available for use in the building industry instead of being set behind or disposed as a landfill. Therefore, in order to minimize the undesirable environmental impact of the industry and also to prevent the inefficient use of natural resources, it is important to prioritize the reuse of waste material, especially coconut shells, in the building sector. However, in order to decide the required properties and characteristics to ensure that it does not crumble during the construction, the development of the building material from the coconut shell need to be investigated. There are two objectives in this research. First is to investigate the mechanical properties of particle board from coconut shell with sucrose as natural binder. And second is to compare the properties of coconut shell particle board with other agriculture waste products, which is wood sawdust. Next is the project scope and limitation. The scope of the project is to determine the mechanical properties of the coconut shell particle board. Next, the process involved in producing the particle board from coconut shell are crushing, grinding, screening and hot pressing. During the fabrication of the particle board, a different percentage of sucrose used during the mixing process. During the hot processing process, three different temperatures will be used to produce the particle board. The limitation for this project is this project will take a lot of time to be completed and need to be done carefully and the result of this project are restricted for construction industry. Next is the literature review. 
as for the man manufacturing of particle bulk from coconut shell. Coconut shell are one of the common ways that can be considered when making a particle bulk. In reality, a lot of research has been done to maximize the use of agriculture waste for particle bulk manufacturing. As we know, that particle bulk manufacturing are widely used in the construction industry. As for the processing process, the coconut shell must be dried in open air to eliminate the excess water. The coconut shell has to be grinded into ash as it will make the mixing process simpler for the particle bulk to develop. Based on the previous studies, there are several forms of adhesive and binder that have been used to bind the coconut shell particle. Each adhesive or binder material can give a different particle bulk density. The binder or adhesive that have been tested to bind the coconut shell particle are potato starch, phenol formaldehyde resin, castor oil polyurethane, and epoxy resin. Epoxy resin is one of the most substantial classes of thermosetting polymer, widely used as matrices and structural adhesive for fiber reinforced composite materials. This is due to the strongly cross-linked structure of the polymers and exhibits numerous desirable properties such as high tensile strength and good thermal and chemical resistance. To the next part is the mechanical properties. Particles of the coconut shell have a significant impact on the composite strength, hardness and energy effect. The physical properties of density are closely related to mechanical properties such as tensile strength and elastic modulus. Decreasing density may be due to weak adhesion, direct interaction with shell particles and void formation. This decline in density resulted in a decrease in tensile properties. The volume of particles in the coconut shell increased. The tensile strength of the particle bulk composite also decreased. With an improvement in the content of the coconut shell particle within the composite matrix, the resilience of the composite also increased. Next is the microstructure analysis. The figure shown in the slide is the research that had been made by Olumuiwa. The image was being captured by the scanning electron microscope, which is SEM, with each figure represent a different cases. For the first figure, it represents the microanalysis of polyethylene matrix composite without coconut shell particle addition. The, next, the second figure is the microanalysis of polyethylene matrix composite with 15% coconut shell particle addition. And the third figure shows the microanalysis of polyethylene matrix composite with 25% coconut shell particle addition. From the figure, we can see that with an increase in the content of coconut shell particle, the homogeneity between the coconut shell particle and the matrix will decrease. This explains the reduction of intensity within the composite matrix structure with an increase in the content of the coconut shell particle. The increase in hardness is due to an increase in the percentage of particle in the coconut shell within the composite matrix. The next figure shows the result of SEM by Fiorelli. There is a homogeneous dispersion of the resin between the particle by scanning electron microscope study using different variable increase which is important for the transfer of loads between fibers for composite materials. There is degradation and disruption of the fibers after accelerated aging test, as shown in the figure. Next is the methodology of this project. The first step is to manufacture the particle bulk from coconut shell by drying, brushing, mixing, milling, and hot pressing. The coconut shell will be dried in open air and crush to ash particle by means of crushing machine. The coconut shell needs to be dried to remove the moisture and any impurities. The coconut shell is then combined with the sucrose by the mixing machine. During the mixing phase, three separate percentage of sucrose will be used. Composite compression was carried out using a hot pressing machine for a few minutes under control pressure and temperature. During the process, the three different temperature will be used. The particle board will be cooled to room temperature under continuous pressure. 
Then the sample is withdrawn from the press machine and cut into appropriate portion size using the milling machine for the next step. Next is to conduct the microstructure analysis using scanning electron microscope SEM. The particle board is scanned with the scanning electron microscope SEM to determine the bonding properties of the particle board. A high energy electron beam is used by the scanning electron microscope to create a spectrum of signals on the surface of the particle board. Texture, chemical composition, crystalline structure and material orientation are included in the information obtained. Next is to run the particle board sample into a mechanical test such as flexural test, tensile test and bending test. As for the expected result, when the process has been done, we can see that as the surface percentage increase in the particle board, the density of the particle board will increase. The increase of the surface percentage may result in increasing of the tensile strength of the particle board. The expected result that have been derived is supported by the past research by Bashka, as he said that the wave percentage of coconut shell increase, the ultimate tensile strength of the particle board will decrease. Next is the project sustainability towards environment and economy. At the end of this project, we can conclude that we can also implement it to maximize the use of natural resources in reusing the waste material. We also can minimize the undesirable environmental impact towards the industry and also to produce a cheap and economic material for industry, mainly in construction industry. Next is the gun chart. This is the gun chart of the process that have been the high tech during the whole semester and the plan for my FYP2. This, this is the four main reference that I have been used in my final year project proposal. A study by Bashka, Olumuyiwa, Fiorelli and Rocha Almeida. That's all from me. Thank you very much. For further information or inquiries, please contact me through my mobile phone at 019-760-7290 or through my email hazikakmal022 at gmail.com